Um, a bunch of questions uh, that center around growth. And let me, uh, I guess let me preface that by saying that there does seem to be a sense of unease about, the, about how fast and how high uh, town is growing. And I think that underlines some of these questions, but there's questions about infrastructure and affordable housing and homelessness. So let's start with, let's start with homelessness. Um, and we'll start with you, Councilwoman. Um, clearly, the, the Cooper Court and the lawsuit are, are kind of the flashpoints in this conversation, but they are only symptoms or elements of what is a more difficult and broader issue. So what is your plan for homelessness? And I would say if they need two minutes, let's give them two minutes for that. Sure, I'm gonna get right to the point on this one. I do not support encampments. Nobody supports encampments. Absolutely nobody. To say otherwise is disingenuous at best and is breeding fear on the backs of those who are most marginalized in our community. I know that we can do better. Saying we have to throw people in jail, write them tickets, we gotta ask ourselves, is that gonna keep them off the streets? What if the court next week says they're not gonna hear the case? Or what if the Supreme Court takes the case and rules the ticketing people for sleeping is unconstitutional. What do we as a city do then? I know that we can do it without that. Saying we have to have this tool to put people in jail, write tickets, diminishes the good work of people in this community that are working day by day to prevent evictions that increase homelessness working day by day to connect those on the streets with the services that they need to be able to move into a shelter and into a home, and hopefully in the long term find a job without a record. It diminishes the work of the shelters who are coming up with the solutions and asking us as a city to continue to invest in them. So much has changed since Cooper Court. We have permanent supportive housing we have better coordination of services. We can be a model city if we lead with Boise values of compassion and justice and kindness and get real in recognizing that the solutions are here if we're vigilant to protect camps, if we don't allow ourselves to have what happened in the cities the mayor mentions all the time. I know that we can do this and I am committed to leading that conversation. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? We are a model city. Folks, they visit me all the time. What are you doing in Boise that's working? And what we're doing is uh, fashioning remedies for people like New Path. 45 chronically homeless people have a place to live for the last seven months because of the city of Boise. Another uh, almost 30 uh, homeless uh, veterans will have a great place to stay uh, in just a couple months, and both of them have the services they need to help them. Catch was a city program, and we rolled it out. Allenbaugh House is a community detox and crisis mental health center that we could never get done until I did it. All of these things are the compassion of the city of Boise, and many, many more, whether it's the rescue mission or all kinds of programs. But you cannot have camps. You cannot have it both ways. We are the model. Uh, you can, we, we uh, took down Cooper Court in the best way of any city in the country, and it only came up because our officers mistakenly thought they couldn't issue citations in that short time. And within a matter of weeks, there it was. Uh, we hoped that the winter would, uh, would disrupt it. It didn't. You have to do both things, ladies and gentlemen. The toughest decision I've ever made was to take down that camp. Again, I've lost friends, I've lost more sleep than you know, but that's what being the mayor is about. We are the model uh, in the country. Look around, Vancouver, Washington repealed their ordinance within weeks, camp springing up. I can't tell you how many people since the election that said, we don't wanna be like Seattle, we can't be like Portland and San Francisco. That's what makes Boise, Boise. This is the central issue of this campaign. Uh, and uh, I'll make those tough decisions to move forward. 
Thank you. Let's stick to housing for just a minute. A number of questions about affordable housing. And let's wrap that into uh, uh, several other questions. Uh, what is your plan for affordable housing, protecting our neighborhoods, and, and while, while not driving property taxes higher? And why don't we start with you, Mr. Mayor? Uh, Grow Our Housing is an uh, initiative that we've been working on for a couple years. Uh, and the great example of how it works uh, was just a couple weeks ago, right on Fairview Avenue uh, at Adair. Uh, we have 130 units of housing, uh, beautiful housing. One of the few times that a project looks better built than it did in the drawings. We've all seen those drawings and there's people walking around. Uh, this one looks better built than it did drawn. And we have affordable workforce and market housing all in the same project, uh, all close to where there are services. That is our model, uh, to take city property as often as we can, private property, and lower the cost of housing. The financial community is stepping up to talk to us. We're going to leverage everything we have uh, to make uh, affordable housing all across the city. The tool of, uh, of CCDC is so important to that, to that future, and that's what we want to bring to other areas of Boise. Uh, it's a tough lift, let's be honest. We also have to approve housing. We have to approve dense, multi-use, walkable, bikeable communities. Time, That's time. what this is all about. Time's up, Mayor. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. I know it's a big question and two minutes is a short time, but housing, property taxes, and protecting our neighborhoods. Well, it's a big question and it's, it's a big issue this election. I mean, I've heard from thousands of people that um, you're experiencing an affordability crisis, that you're concerned that your kids won't come back here because they can't buy a house, that you might have to move when you retire because property taxes have gone up, and related to growth too, that if you find a job that provides a better opportunity, you can't necessarily get there because we don't have the transportation systems we need. We need. I have to make tough votes every week on housing and talk often about how as our city grows up, we're gonna grow up and closer to each other, denser. And we protect our quality of life in doing this by reimagining what gathering places look like, by creating pathways for people that connect them from home to neighborhood school, to work, to the coffee shop, and allow people to commute in different ways. We need to protect open spaces as quickly as we are developing. And we've got to have real conversations about the urgency of this affordability crisis that we're experiencing, the impact that low wages have on that, and the tools that we ought to be trying to create people-scaled housing faster and better and quicker for our residents.